Hey guys, so today's topic involves an amazing discovery beneath the most mysterious, secretive, and heavily guarded set of pyramids in the world. They're located in China, consisting of over a hundred pyramids that stretch many kilometers. They are completely shut off to the public. The logistics of policing such a location must be a mammoth task. It makes one wonder what could be under or within these mysterious structures that could require such high levels of protection and secrecy. Throughout the years, many people have attempted to get near them, with most receiving a hefty punishment for their troubles. They were completely locked away from the rest of the world until only very recently. It wasn't until 1910 that the West even became aware of their existence. First documented in large numbers in 1912 by Western traders Fred Meyer Schroeder and Oscar Mammon. They were subsequently cloaked in a veil of secrecy and security. Did these early excavations unearth something the Chinese government rather the world not see? Is this a similar sequence of events witnessed in Egypt, pertaining of course to the discovery of the secret vaults beneath the Great Sphinx? You could be forgiven in suspecting this is exactly what happened when you learn of secret expeditions by a team of daring Chinese archaeologists, and what they have been revealing in regards to these amazing structures, but subsequently leaking it to the world. A particular area of interest they have discovered, they now strongly suspect was used by a highly advanced interstellar race of beings, capable of harvesting energy from the Earth. Throughout the area, strange metal pipes dating back more than 13,000 years litter the mountainside, running into the adjacent hillsides and into a saltwater lake. It is believed the entire area was once a functioning energy generator, similar to the quote, naturally formed battery that has been discovered, is the source of the Hesladon lights. With flat-topped pyramids throughout the region, they have also began to suspect these were used as landing bays for some form of craft. With the area clearly visible from space along with most other ancient pyramidic sites throughout the world, also with them lining up with star charts, their locations begin to become a logical solution for a visitor to our planet to be able to find. At the beginning of the 1900s, a local monastery supplied archival parchments which revealed the first records of the pyramids was written over 5,000 years ago, so it is very likely that they are even older. The documents suggest that the pyramids belonged to an age when China was ruled by ancient emperors who believed in the existence of extraterrestrial gods. Moreover, the emperors themselves insisted that they were ancestors of the sons of the sky who had landed in the earth in quote, iron dragons. The recent expeditions have revealed some startling features that have survived. Preserved at the location, the team confirmed beyond doubt that the entire complex, many of the site still buried in the earth, is connected in some way with the use of very ancient underground pipelines. The composition of the pipes seems to have mixed or leached into the ground in which they have laid for an unimaginable time. Most reveal a high iron content, but have virtually fossilized. The site, if open to the world, would clearly reveal strong, if not overwhelming evidence for the existence of a highly advanced ancient race who were capable of space travel. Finally exposing the pyramid's true function. Not only that, but it has also been postulated that the majority of the ancient tombs, which were laid in the area by the builders of such structures, remain intact, not yet discovered, never rated of their priceless artifacts. What unimaginable things could be lying in these mysterious underground vaults, which have sat in darkness for over 10 millennia? Will we ever get to a point as a species where we are ready to find out? As always, thanks for watching guys, take care. On the 25th of January, 2011, the streets of Cairo were being ravaged by a rioting population, demanding the end of President Hosni Mubarak's 30-year regime. While the world was distracted by the dramatic scenes of chaos upon the streets above, deep within the ancient dusty tunnels, a team of archaeologists led by Suzanne Bickel of the University of Basel in Switzerland was quietly making one of the most significant discoveries of the past century. They had initially found the top of a large round stone at the eastern end of the Valley of the Kings. The archaeologists suspected that it was just the top of an abandoned shaft, but before they could investigate, due to Egypt's political process regarding finds within the valley, they had to cover the stone rim with their own locked iron door, inform the Egyptian authorities, 
and apply for an official permit to excavate. A year later, after gaining approval to excavate, Bickle returned with a team of two dozen people, including field director Elena Paula Goth of the University of Basel, Egyptian inspector Ali Rita, and local workmen. Each took turns lying on the ground, head pressed against the shaft wall, one arm through a small hole next to the capstone, snapping photographs. They left little doubt that it was indeed an ancient tomb. On top of the debris rested a dusty black coffin, carved from sycamore wood and decorated with large yellow hieroglyphs on its sides and top. Bickle has stated that she has never seen an Egyptian coffin in such a good condition before. The dating of fragments of pottery made from Nile silt and pieces of plaster, commonly used to seal tomb entrances in ancient times, together with the age of the other nearby sites, have indicated that the tomb could be more than 3,000 years old. The hieroglyphs describe the tomb's occupant as being named Nahimi's Bastet. Egyptologists currently believe she was a lady of the upper class and of Amun. People have been claiming there was nothing new left to find in the Valley of the Kings for almost as long as they have been digging there. The Venetian antiquarian Giovanni Belzoni believed he had emptied the last of the valley's tombs during his 1817 expedition, while Theodore Davis, who excavated there a century later, came to a similar conclusion right before Tutankhamun's burial chamber was found. Fortunately, there is a growing number of people who are beginning to suspect that there is a wealth of discoveries still left to be made in the Valley of the Kings, the Nile Delta, and Egyptian as a whole. And thanks to discoveries such as these, interest in these existing mysteries grows by the day. It is interesting to see that in this period, even a wealthy girl was buried with quite simple things, Bickle says, comparing Nahim's Bastet's coffin and steel with the elaborate pottery, furniture, and food found in earlier tombs. Her wooden coffin was certainly quite expensive, she says, but nonetheless, it lacked the elaborate inner coffins found in similar burials. Is this the burial chamber of an extremely ancient queen? After reinforcing the coffin and securing the mummy, Bickle's team have transported across the Nile to Luxor, where a full investigation is currently being undertaken into the true identity of the mystery female. With substantial insight into the controversial finds within ancient Egypt, we personally suspect that often the tombs, which appear the most crudely designed, containing wooden sarcophagus, are generally found to be the most ancient. Furthermore, their hieroglyphic writings were often far more exquisite in nature. Could this be the discovery of an original burial? and the crude hieroglyphic claim of the occupant's identity of fake? Hiding the Delta's true antiquity? A secret many fringe scientists have begun to believe is being protected by Egyptian antiquities. Many have come to suspect the Egyptians merely copied the original builders of the pyramids, after taking occupation of their structures many years later. Supportive evidence for these claims comes in many forms. Erosion upon the pyramids, and especially the Sphinx, including over 100 underground chambers we are currently researching, discovered under Giza in 1995 by a team led by Kent Weeks, which also show strong evidence of several flash flooding events involving seawater throughout their long existence. The lack of any written detail pertaining to the construction of either monument in any hieroglyphs found in ancient Egypt, and so on. We find it incredibly intriguing that more was not made public regarding this amazing find, which leads us to suspect it may be a highly important, albeit highly controversial, discovery. We will continue to do research on Nahem's Bastet and will endeavor to keep you all informed regarding any notable findings. Firstly, many thanks to Ellen Lloyd over at AncientPages.com for her extensive research and writing on the conspiracy. Has a buried city within the Grand Canyon been covered up? The Hopi Indians have a traditional story told to them by their ancestors. It details the original pyramid builders living in an underworld in the Grand Canyon. Dissension arose between the good and the bad, the people of one heart and the people of two. Machetto, who was their chief, 
taught them how to leave the underworld. He caused a tree to grow up and pierce through the roof of the underworld, letting the people of one heart climb out. They settled by Passisvai, Red River, which is in Colorado, subsequently growing grain and corn. They then sent out a message to the Temple of the Sun, asking the blessing of peace, goodwill and rain for people of one heart, but their messenger never returned. Among the engravings of animals in the local caves is an image of a heart over the spot where it is said the entrance to be located. This legend was learned by W. E. Rollins during a year spent with the Hopi Indians. An article published in the Arizona Gazette reinforced this legend. Ever since the article appeared, there has been a lot of speculations whether an underground city actually exists. David Hatcher Childress, who examined the story, said, Perhaps the most amazing suppression of all is the excavation of an Egyptian tomb by the Smithsonian itself in Arizona. A lengthy front-page story of the Phoenix Gazette on April 5, 1909 gave a highly detailed report on the discovery and excavation led by a Professor S. A. Jordan of the Smithsonian. The World Explorers Club decided to check on this story by calling the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Speaking to a Smithsonian staff archaeologist, they told her that they were investigating a story from a 1909 Phoenix newspaper article about the Smithsonian Institution's excavation of rock-cut vaults in the Grand Canyon where Egyptian artifacts had been discovered, and whether the Smithsonian Institute could give me any more information on the subject. Her reply was as follows. The first thing I can tell you, before we go any further, is that no Egyptian artifacts of any kind have ever been found in North or South America. Therefore, I can tell you that the Smithsonian Institute has never been involved in such excavations. While it cannot be discounted that the entire story is an elaborate newspaper hoax, the fact that it was on the front page, named the prestigious Smithsonian Institution, and gave a highly detailed story that went on for several pages lends a great deal to its credibility. It is hard to believe such a story could have come out of thin air. Is the idea that ancient Egyptians came to the Arizona area in the ancient past so objectionable and preposterous that it must be covered up? Perhaps the Smithsonian Institution is more interested in maintaining the status quo than rocking the boat with astonishing new discoveries that overturned previously accepted academic teachings. Historian and linguist Carl Hart, editor of World Explorer, then obtained a hiker's map of the Grand Canyon from a bookstore in Chicago. Poring over the map, they were amazed to see that much of the area on the north side of the canyon has Egyptian names. The area around 94 Mile Creek and Trinity Creek had areas, rock formations apparently, with names like Tower of Set, Tower of Ra, Horus Temple, Osiris Temple, and Isis Temple. Could these legends actually be true? As always, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.